Let's look at the ceiling settings. First, choose the grid ceiling. Right-click on it and the local menu will appear. Select the property command. The properties that we modify in the appearing dialog window will be used to create a subsequent grid ceilings. This command is also available under Ribbon Bar, Building, Properties, Structure, Grid Ceiling option. Let's start with the basic geometric properties. You can choose between the strip and the suspended grid. Our current ceiling is a suspended grid ceiling. It would appear along a stripe without cross ribs. You can also specify the support raster settings, for example, how they should look. Let's look at an example. Write both the length and width values to 1000 mm. It can be seen that the 600 mm long panels are floating between the 1000 mm grids. With this method, you can set the grids and adjust the panels to them. Now set it back to the original 600 mm. You can also specify the direction of the panels. You can change this later. You can specify how to fit a previously created grid ceiling layout into a given shape. This can be done by changing the reference point. The reference point is indicated by arrows. You can use offsets in different directions compared to the original raster. These were the general settings for type and allocation. By clicking on the second tab, you can define or modify the components of the suspended ceiling. The first and most important is the panel. You can modify the material of the panel or create your own by specifying thickness, material and size. Use three additional tabs to set which luminaire to use. For suspended grid ceilings, you should choose a luminaire that fits well. Fire protection units can also be defined. On the last page, air distribution units can be added to the ceiling. Here, a simple vent is chosen. On the distribution page, we can set the allotment rules on the previously set lighting, fire protection and ventilation elements. The grid setting is the default, but there is an option for a location, a column or a row, as well as one object. The allotment is controllable by giving the number of steps. According to the current example, on every other place there is a luminaire. The luminaires do not appear on the edge because they would have been cut off. You can check this by activating the Allow Not Whole Units option. Then these luminaires appear and can be seen if they are just a little, but they are beyond the last ceiling type. Turn off this option. If I increase or decrease the main runner grid step, the difference is immediately visible. At the value of 1, all luminaires are fitted in a tile and none left out. If I increase this value further, the difference will increase. This applies to the cross runner grid step too. Finally, it is possible to push the luminaire further away. Arrows indicate the direction of offset. This value can also be a positive or negative. Select the one object as the place of these luminaires is marked on the floor plan. Due to the smaller rooms, one luminaire is placed in a room. Click on the fire protection unit tab. Here the default setting is one object as usually you need one item. If you want to change it, here is a possibility to do just like the lamps. On the tab below you can select the fire alarm system. If we accept the default object, clicking on the green tick, it will be placed next to the luminaire. The program attempts to place the object without colliding with another object. This is also visible at the offset value. 
use the same method to place a fan. It is also possible to place particular elements such as emergency exit symbol. You can specify the settings separately by clicking on the main runner, cross runner and perimeter wall angle tabs. This is what we are talking about. Different heights and offsets can be specified. Cuts will be dealt later. On the General Setting tab, you can specify the representation in 2D and how the program displays it on the floor plan. Finally, we have the opportunity to save the created ceiling.